There are a number of reasons there's great value in traveling and seeing the world. Uh, you know, maybe the, the first one to, to come to my mind is, is that we've talked about this in the past, the importance of art. Um, and it, you just, you're just going to be exposed to so much, particularly if you travel in Europe, and this is the reason why I'd say if you haven't traveled much in your life, if you haven't really left the United States, the first place to go is Europe, is there is so much good art to be seen. There is so much great art that you can see. And, and, and look, you can, you can look at art on the computer screen, you can get a poster, but there's nothing, there's nothing like the experience of seeing great art in person. It's nothing quite like the first time, second time, third time, 10th time, it doesn't really matter, of walking into uh, the Academia in Florence and taking the turn into the hallway. And at the end of the hallway, there stands Michelangelo's David in, in all his amazing magnificence. And it's just not the same as the David at the, I don't know, Caesar's Palace in, in Vegas or, or the David that's outside in Florence or anywhere else. It's just... It's just magnificent, and it's awe-inspiring, and it gives you a sense of grandeur and heroism, and, and, it, and it, it gives you energy energy to combat almost anything. So it's, it's seeing it in person is it, just stunning. You can see photographs. You can see posters. You, it doesn't match it. Or uh, seeing the, the winged victory at the top of the staircase at the Louvre. Just the size of it, the, 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 the dynamism of it, the, the, the movement that they have managed to put into stone uh, is stunning. Or, 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 to, or to see Michelangelo's dying slave at the Louvre. Or, so one of the first things I'd encourage everybody to do is take some art tours. <laughs> Italy and France, uh, you know, come to mind as, as, as the primary places to go. Uh, Rome, Florence, in Italy, and and Paris in France, and and you know the Louvre is 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 magnificent. The the, the Dorsay is magnificent. The the museums in in Rome, um, any church you walk into in Rome, any little dinky church anyway, is going to have some magnificent paintings that are kind of awe inspiring and fun to fun to see. Um, and then uh, and then. Uh, uh, you know, you can, um, uh, there are museums in every major European capital. There's some great museums in London. There's some great, there's some good museums in Germany. There's some, uh, you know, good museums in, in, in Madrid, in, 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 uh, in Basel, in, uh, in Spain. And, and, oh, of course, in Amsterdam, you've got the Rembrandts and the Vermeers. So, so one reason to go travel <laughs> is to go see the great cultural achievements of Western civilization. Um, and uh, while well, we'll talk about going to, uh, to, uh, to Asia and to, to other places around the world, to Africa and so on, uh, the first priority in my book is always uh, Europe. Now, I've, I've been pretty much every country in Europe. I mean, I've got maybe three countries that uh, well, maybe maybe five countries that I haven't been to uh, that don't have any particularly appeal necessarily. So I think I haven't been to Belarus. I'm probably not going given its uh, regime there. I haven't been to Moldova. I haven't been to um, Slovenia. I've been to Slovakia, but not Slovenia. So I intend to go to Slovenia. I haven't been to Bosnia. Um, I'm sure I'll be in Bosnia. I'm sure I'll be in Slovenia. Uh, but I've been to pretty much every other European country. Uh, I've tried to go to museums and all of them. And yeah, there, there's, there's just so much to see. And then add to the museums, the architecture, and, you know, the, 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 just, the just beauty of the cities themselves, the, 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 the layout, the, the, the way they're placed. And this, so uh, go see the achievements of Western civilization. And those achievements are the cities, those achievements are the buildings, the architecture. For example, uh, uh, Prague is, you know, down the old city in Prague. It's just this magnificent uh, uh, Art Deco um, 
you know, it, it was built in the late 19th century, early 20th century. It's got these beautiful buildings with sculptures on top of them. Uh, just magnificent and beautiful and an atmosphere and a sense of life. And a, and a lot of Europe was like that. And what happened was Prague is one of the few cities that the Nazis did not manage to blow up. So when they retreated, they actually bombed the bridges and bombed some of the buildings, had explosives, and they managed to, 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 what do you call it, to, you know, stop them from, from exploding and save the city. And the, the, the Allies did not bomb Prague. So Prague came out of World War II relatively unscathed. So for, as compared to, for example, uh, I don't know, I just realized when I was in Tokyo, I realized this, I would realized this before, but every time I, guess to, I go to Tokyo, I realize this. Almost every single building in Tokyo, almost every single building, certainly with the exception of the, the Empress Palace, but outside of the Empress Palace and a few other places here and there, almost every single building in Tokyo is new, new in terms of its post-World War II. And that's because during World War II, the Allies basically flattened the city. There was nothing left there. They, they, they firebombed Tokyo, and Tokyo was annihilated. It was destroyed. It was like a nuclear bomb had gone off in it, although it hadn't. But there was the equivalent of that because they had systematically constantly bombed it, and particularly firebombed it. The same is true of places like Dresden and, and, and other cities in Germany that were just, um, j just destroyed during World War II, and therefore everything in them uh, is new. So um, the uh, so the 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 uh, the artwork, the buildings, and then of course all of that leads to something else that you get to experience when you travel, in a sense firsthand. Uh, you get to experience the context of history. That is, you get to experience uh, what is kind of the the. So, for example, you get experience a city that, that didn't exist and it was destroyed in 1945. And suddenly, you know, look at it. So that recalls a, a history, a context, a certain history about what was going on in, in the war. But it also brings to the forefront uh, all the achievements that have happened since then, uh, all the growth and all the success. And that gives you a reality. You can see those graphs about um, economic growth. You can see graphs about how poor we used to be and how rich we are today. Traveling gives you a real sense of what that looks like and what wealth looks like and what going from nothing to something looks like. It concretizes all of that economic achievement, all of the cultural achievement that we learn. When we say Western civilization is the great civilization in human history, what does that even mean? How do you, how do you know what that is? Well, one of the ways you know it is by going and actually seeing it and actually experiencing it. So it's, it's um, you get a, a sense of all the abstract ideas and the, and the stories you hear and the history you hear, you get it in many ways concretized for you. You get to see the Medici Palace, you get to see, uh, you know, where, where Michelangelo worked. You get, and there's an almost value in that, there's an almost pleasure in that, satisfaction in that, and, I, and again, a concretization of, stories and ideas and, and that, that you might have heard, that people might talk about, that you might have read in a book, are now in front of you and you're actually there. Uh, so it's, it's super interesting and, 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 and exciting to actually be in those places. One of the things I love about London is you can walk all over London, you walk in the different neighborhoods, and different neighborhoods are like from different centuries. And, and you can experience, uh, you know, buildings from those centuries. You can experience, you can imagine a little bit, at least London's changed a lot over the centuries, but you can imagine a little bit uh, what, what life was like. Particularly London is a testament to the 19th century onwards and the wealth that was created in England uh, during the 19th and 20th centuries and, and how it manifest and, and to this day, it's the 21st century, and how it manifested in, um, in the cities. All right, I, I think I've got a question from Richard for hundred dollars, so I'll jump in and take it. It's relevant to the topic. Um, 
this is Scott's question, I guess, not Rich's question. It does, it does that for you. I guess this refers to David, Michelangelo David. It does that for you and maybe most people, but it doesn't necessarily mean their values are off if something else inspires them more. Yeah, I mean, uh, what inspires you, relatively speaking, um, is is an issue of your own sense of life and your own set of values. Now, that is not um, so. There, there, there certainly is optionality there, but up to a limit. If if uh, if what you're telling me is um, you're in, you, yeah, oh, David's okay. What really inspires you is Kandinsky. Then there's something wrong with you, or, or Jason Pollock, or or uh, I don't know, or, or um, you know any one of the modern artists. Then this then there's something weird. I mean, you can make judgments about people based on the art they like. They like. Art is a reflection of your values, and you can tell a lot about somebody's psychology. You can tell a lot about somebody's uh, values hierarchy uh, based on the art that they like. And uh, I don't know. Could I be friends with somebody who didn't like Michelangelo's David? I, I don't know. Um, but I know, I, you know, I, I, I know people who like um, other sculptures more than they like Michelangelo's David because... Uh, even within Michelangelo, I think Leonard Peikoff's favorite sculpture is the Dying Slave, Michelangelo's Dying Slave, which is in in the Louvre. And I, I understand why, and and I, I love the Dying Slave, but you know, I I by far prefer the David, um, even though I I completely understand what what it is that Leonard likes about Dying Slave. Uh, you know, and and uh, so I'm not I'm not referring to any particular. A particular sculpture, particular painting, particular, I mean, for me, uh, being in front of the David is, is, is one of the great experiences of life. And uh, if there are other works of art, and, and if you're, on the other hand, Scott says, I dig rock and roll. If your life is, if your exp aesthetic experience is limited to rock and roll, then you're missing out in life. Uh, and I've, t I've said this before in, on Yuan's Rules for Life. You're missing out. You 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 got too narrow a scope of aesthetic a scope. You you're missing out on huge possibilities in terms of values. Uh, you, you should broaden your horizons. You should learn to appreciate sculpture and painting and literature and and classical music and other things. Uh, and and one of the ways to do that is to go and see the actual artworks and actually experience them. So uh, many people have way too narrow. And again, I think Americans, because of where it is, I you know many people, because of um, because of the way they grew up, because of the values they were exposed to, because they haven't been taught how to relate to other forms of art, uh, have a way too narrow view of aesthetics and and art and and uh, and so on, and and that's. Too bad for them. So my call to you is broaden those horizons, uh, you know, experience new things. And, I, you know, one of the things I would do is if, if, you, if you go for the first time to Italy is, is get, go on a tour, get a, get a guide, get a guide who will explain some of the artwork, explain the historical context, explain what they do. So first time go in and just, and just scan and, and get a sense and experience kind of in a broad sense, what is going on. And then maybe go a second time and, and just just for contemplation, just to look at the artwork and see what you like and what you don't like. But it's it's good to get that, you know, experience of understanding the artwork, understanding its historical context and understanding what's going on in it because it's a new form and it's, it's hard to appreciate something new. It, it's great to go to some art lectures, some art history lectures, you would get immense value out of those. I mean, again, I've talked about this uh, in the past about the, the benefits of art and the benefits of surrounding yourself with great art, but also the benefits of experiencing great art and therefore widening your horizons and widening your knowledge when it comes to art, right? Don't just go and say, I'm only going to, you know, I'm only going to look at what I like today. 
try to gain, you know, why, why is Rembrandt admired so much? Why is Vermeer admired so much? Why is Raphael admired so much? Try to get an appreciation at least to understand why in, in context, the art historian, the, 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 the professional, uh, uh, professional aesthetician uh, appreciates who they appreciate. And maybe you will learn to like them too. Maybe not, but maybe you will learn to like them too. So, you know, this is my uh, advice to you. Um, you know, yeah, I, I mean, some people want to stay narrow-minded and they want to only experience what, they've, what they know and they want to only do what's comfortable and they, want, they don't want to stretch their minds and they don't want to stretch their experiences and they don't want to try anything beyond the scope of their narrow little world. And it, that's not living as I define it. Uh, and this is, again, the beauty of travel. It stretches you. It exposes you to new things. It pushes you. It, 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 it gives you the opportunity to experience life at its fullest and certainly the aesthetic experiences and again a full appreciation a full appreciation of the achievements of western civilization will allow you to then have much more confidence in defending western civilization when we go out there and say western civilization is great you'll know what you're talking about so many people have no clue western civilization means what to them what are they defending so many people are, are limited in the scope, for example, just to politics. But Western civilization is a lot more than politics. A lot more than politics. And, and the pleasure, the beauty the, 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 of, of being in Athens, let's say, and not only seeing the great achievements, the, the great monuments that the uh, Athenians have left to us, the great architecture, the great buildings. And again, you have to understand them in the, in the historical context you know the Colosseum and everything and then going to the 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 the, uh, the art museum and seeing all the magnificent sculptures from ancient Greece and the pottery and, and and all of that it's just it's just amazing and stunning and again you get a first-hand appreciation for their achievements not just in philosophy but that those achievements in philosophy which we've all read about we've all studied now apply to actual life to existence you get a sense of what it was like to be in the Athenian market and what is a sense it was to be, to be wealthy in Athens, but also the aesthetic beauty. Um, once you get that, you get a much greater appreciation for what it means to say Western civilization, what it means to defend Western civilization. But then there's also just the pleasure and the emotional satisfaction and the, uh, in, 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 just to say I'm, I'm, walking, I'm walking in the streets that Aristotle walked in um, you know, you can go today to to where the academia was, where Aristotle school was, and and you can see kind of at least the ground where or the ruins of of what used to be the buildings of the academia, and you can say Aristotle taught you. How cool is that? You can go to Plato's Academy. Um, I mean, you can you can you get a sense of history that is is really hard to to get without actually traveling there or being there. I mean, one of, the, one of my favorite places uh, to have been just because it was so educational and uh, was Pompeii. Pompeii is, um, in, uh, is uh, south uh, of um, Naples. It's just uh, at the bottom of uh, the uh, volcano, the Vesuvius volcano. And what happened in Pompeii is the volcano erupted and it basically covered the city and it preserved it for 2,000 years. So we now excavate it and there's the city and it's, it's frozen in time. It's exactly the way it was 2,000 years ago, preserved by, by, the, uh, by the lava from the volcano. So you can, you can see what life was like. And it's truly stunning because suddenly you realize the kind of achievements that the Romans uh, that the Romans had, and and uh, both engineering achievements, which some we knew somewhat about, but here you can see them in, in person. Uh, you can see, uh, you know, things like the fact that they had uh, pipes with running water in it, taps. They literally had taps. Uh, the fact that they had multi-story buildings, something that Europe didn't have 
for a thousand years after that. Uh, you know, the fact, their attitude towards sex, which, which is definitely is the same thing at Ephesus. Ephesus, you can see uh, signage in the pavement uh, to the brothel, right? Uh, so just, just little elements like that that give you a, 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 a completely different sense of what life was like, um, what life was like, back then and it gives you a concrete sense of the history it it's it adds so much to the um to the study of history to the reading of books now you you're literally standing in the place ephesus is uh is in uh turkey uh but it was uh an ancient greek uh it was an ancient greek city in turkey and it's they say it's the best preserved Greek ruins from, from classical Greeks. So you really get a sense again of what uh, a, a town city was, was laid out, was like, the, the, the kind of buildings, the scale of the buildings, uh, the streets where the sculptures were, you know, streets in ancient Greece were lined with sculptures, you know, the main boulevards. Just imagine that, uh, and and the sculptures were not just in um, in bronze. Many of them were bronze, but they were colored. They were painted, uh, so it's unbelievably colorful, and a celebration of of the human body, the celebration of human life. Uh, just a, just a magnificence as compared to when you walk today in a modern street, and if you see any kind of sculpture, it's modern mangled metal that means nothing and does nothing to anybody. So, um, just, uh, you know, just, just, uh, 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 fascinating and interesting. If you go to, if you go to Israel, of course, Israel is filled with history, modern history, ancient history, uh, and, and, and you can, you can walk among the ruins and where history, where these amazing things happened that, that helped shape what we know today as, uh, as Western civilization. Uh, so... I think what what traveling, particularly, I would say in Europe and parts of parts of the Mediterranean, I would include Israel in that, maybe even Egypt, is you really get a sense of of the scope of Western civilization. You get a sense of the rise and decline. Uh, you get you know you you can go and see Middle Eve, Middle Ages villages, Middle Ages ruins, and compares them to what was before Rome and what came afterwards. Uh, you really get a concretized sense of the scope and scale and 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 changes historical changes that have happened uh, over time so and it's so easy to go now I, again I, I return to my original point it's so easy to travel it's so easy to get on a flight uh, we can all afford it almost everybody can afford it uh, travel anyway uh, and, and, and to see these, uh, these amazing, fantastic um, uh, you know, fantastic uh, testaments to, to, to human achievements and to, and to grandeur. So uh, I said, travel, go out and see the world and, and start, as I said, with Europe and, and the Mediterranean, start with the art. The art in the end is the most important. Second is kind of the, the history the importance of history. And then third, um, the culture of the different places. I mean, it, it, it's it's so much fun to go and see an opera in an opera house in Italy, uh, you, you know, or to, or to, or to uh, you know, just experience the way people behave in different countries, uh, the way they talk to one another, experience the food in different countries, just experience the way people live. It's just... You know, ex being exposed to things that are different, things that you're not used to, allows you to appreciate the good in your own culture, but it allows you also to say, huh, maybe that's better than my own culture. Y you know, it, it, it allows you to uh, have an opportunity to pick and choose out of everything that the world has to offer the best and the things that are most that you're going to enjoy the most. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, 
we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.